Hello fellow collectors, I hope you're doing very well indeed. Today I continue my series where I talk about the best films I saw in the preceding month. May was an interesting month for me film-wise, where I actually watched a good few enjoyable but fairly average films, and again found myself spending a lot of time revisiting films that I'd already seen, and many that are very well known and that have been talked about more or less to death, like Pulp Fiction for example. Which, while it might just be the best looking 4K disc I've ever seen, I'm not sure there's really much more I can add to the conversation. And the same goes for Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, which I was delighted to add to my collection after wanting the Kino Lorber 4K release for a good long while. And so, while those two films, and also 2001 A Space Odyssey, would have undoubtedly been on my list of the best films I watched in May, I've decided to choose some of the other wonderful films to talk about instead. And so, without any further ado, let's talk about the best films I watched in May. First up is Arrival. With the recent release of this lovely edition from Wheat, which I actually passed up to begin with and then decided that I simply had to have it, I thought it was high time for a rewatch. From 2016, it's directed by Denis Villeneuve and stars Amy Adams, Jeremy Renner and Forrest Whitaker, along with several other great supporting actors. I've seen this film at least twice before, but it has been some years since I last watched it, and it's actually a rare one for me where I have actually double dipped on the same format. But bafflingly, I have actually still not seen the film in 4K, as in a move of ridiculous absent-mindedness on my part, I actually put in the Blu-ray by mistake, so I guess I still have the 4K to look forward to in the future. I think Arrival is a strong contender for the best sci-fi of the last 20 years, and for me personally quite a ways superior to something like Blade Runner 2049 for example which Denis Villeneuve also directed and which is of course also fantastic. The story follows the arrival of a host of alien crafts which show up around the world, which I think were absolutely perfectly designed to show such a wonderful majesty and mystery. Amy Adams' character is a greatly skilled linguist and gets called up to try to get a dialogue going, and the film follows that process. Adams is magnificent here and delivers yet another flawless performance from a career brimming with them. Jeremy Renner is also fantastic and I thoroughly enjoyed Forrest Whitaker in his role as well. Both Renner and Adams have great chemistry, which I think is directed so well by Villeneuve, as it simmers gently in the background, in the face of such monumental goings-on. There's also a wonderfully bittersweet thread that runs, that runs throughout this film, which I won't spoil for anyone who might not have seen it yet, but it really binds things together, particularly as it gets clearer what's actually happening. Last year I actually read the book of short stories by Ted Chang, which includes the one Arrival is based on, called The Story of Your Life and Others. Surprisingly to me, I actually didn't enjoy it as much as the film. For some reason or another, it didn't quite capture me in the way that I was expecting it to, unlike a couple of other stories in that book which were absolutely mind-blowing, and I can highly recommend Ted Chang's books of short stories if you haven't read them already. But all in all, this was a glorious rewatch for me, of a film which captures something of the awe and the scale of the unknown, the passion of the human spirit to understand and engage, and the humbling nature of knowing how small we are, and yet how much each one of us matters. It's a film which makes me so glad to have spent the money to get such a wonderful edition for this absolute epic. Next we have Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. After picking up this stunning plain archive edition of this for an absolute steal I might add, I immediately put this in to revisit it. A film from 2011 and directed by Thomas Alfredson, it has a star-studded cast including Gary Oldman, Colin Firth, Mark Strong, John Hurt, Toby Jones and the list goes on. I forget when I saw this one originally, though I think it was after 2011, but this rewatch was absolutely captivating. After watching the fantastic Spy Who Came In From The Cold last year, which we'll actually get onto a bit later on, I've been wanting to watch more adaptations of John le Carre novels, and this one was such a great one. It's riveting, thrilling, dark and mysterious. 
It's a labyrinth of a film that is about the search for a mole in the British military intelligence during the Cold War. The story shifts from Britain to East Germany to Hungary, from places you would expect and locations you certainly wouldn't. It's a film that slowly unravels its mysteries as you become more and more engaged and captivated by the story as it all builds to a glorious reveal and a satisfying ending. It includes some absolutely stellar performances, particularly for me from Tom Hardy and Colin Firth, though as you might expect the entire cast does a stellar job. I often like to say that the journey of cinema is about discovery, but during so many rewatches over the last few months for me, I think it's also one of rediscovery, as despite having seen this one before, I was really not expecting it to be so incredible again. Do yourself a favour if you've got this one sat on a shelf collecting dust and revisit it, because you will not be disappointed. It's an absolute espionage classic. Then we have one of my favourite films that I watched endlessly during my teenage years, it's Tremors. From 1990 and directed by Ron Underwood, starring Kevin Bacon, Fred Ward, as well as a host of others including Ariana Richards as a little girl before she was in Jurassic Park. I've seen this one more times than I can count honestly, but though I've had this older steelbook release of it sat in my collection g gathering dust for about three years now, I hadn't actually put it on to watch on Blu-ray yet. But for one reason or another the mood struck me in May and I knew it was time for a rewatch. And what a joy this film is. We meet Elle Bassett and Valentine McKee, two handymen seemingly doing whatever odd jobs they can to make some cash and make ends meet, and you immediately fall in love with these characters as Val plays a prank on Elle to wake him up. There is perfect chemistry between Ward and Bacon, and they seem to have been friends and partners for years. The easygoing, jovial nonchalance infuses into their interactions, making them a hilarious pairing that you root for from the get-go. So, add a tiny but lovable little village, two buddies and a college student, and mysterious underground man-eating giant worms, and you've got tremors. As silly as it sounds, it's actually a solid film, mixing some classic horror and comedy, and I imagine some tension as well if you haven't seen it a thousand times already. It's endlessly quotable, and if you're having a bad day, this one is a top-tier bad day cure, where you'll enjoy every second. Arrow also have a 4K release of this one, which I'm sure I'll pick up at some point soon. Next we've got My Life as a Courgette. It's a claymation film from 2016, directed by Claude Barras, and written in part by him as well as Celine Sciamma. It stars the voices of Gaspar Schlatter, Sixtine Murat, and Pauline Jacquard, as well as a host of others too. This is one that's been on my periphery for a while, as I kept seeing it pop up on a streaming service, though I forget which one now. Well, this particular day I only had a short while to watch a film, and decided to go for this one as it's only about 65 minutes long. Well, I was not prepared for the emotional roller coaster that I was about to embark on. It's easy to see why this one was nominated for Best Animated Feature at the Oscars. It's a film that deals with some really tough subject matters, like parental abuse and cruelty, bullying and bereavement, but it also threads in community, friendship and restorative trust. It's about a little boy who likes to be called Courgette who through a series of events finds himself in an orphanage, and we follow his journey. I won't say any more than that to avoid spoiling it, but this one was heartbreaking and then heart-mending. It was sweet and wonderful, and the animation was absolutely brilliant too. Next is The Wrestler. I have here the Plain Archive Steelbook edition of it. It's a film from 2008, directed by Darren Aronofsky, and starring Mickey Rock and Marissa Tomei. A while ago I was watching Neil's movie channel, which if you haven't checked out yet you absolutely should, as it's brilliant. Neil's film knowledge is extensive, and I've been thoroughly enjoying his videos. In one of them he mentioned watching Pi, Darren Aronofsky's first film, which is one that I haven't actually seen, which I commented on and he said how Aronofsky films don't often appeal to him at first, and I said it's actually, interestingly enough, the same for me. 
But during that exchange, he reminded me of The Wrestler, which I had completely forgotten about for some reason. It was actually the first Darren Aronofsky film I saw that really connected with me. And it happened all to coincide with the time that I was buying up some plain archive releases. And so I snapped it up. And as of writing this video, the Steelbook is actually still in stock on Plain Archive's website if anyone is interested. The story follows Randy, a wrestler who used to be a huge star, but that time is seemingly decades past. However, wrestling is pretty much all he knows how to do, and so he still does it, in tiny venues, school halls and the like, for small sums of money that they can afford to pay him. All because he is still someone when he wrestles. People, albeit in small numbers, come to see him and chant his name still. He's a man that is absolutely over the hill, his glory days long behind him, and the mistakes that he has made along the way live alongside him. But it's really a story of a man seeking to make his life better and get himself back on track, trying to find connection, taking the humbling hits to make small steps in the right direction. Also, and this is a wild tangent, but I'll say that it's also these themes that made me love the first season of Cobra Kai, and why I've had no interest in it for a long while now. A middle-aged man, full of mistakes and regrets, trying to get back some of his former glory, and in the process trying to get his family back and make a difference as well. That was what was so interesting about the show, and it's a real shame it sort of devolved into a bit of a farce. But thankfully, the wrestler makes no such mistakes. It's a moving and emotional tale, and I still think probably Aronofsky's finest film. And lastly, we have the excellent The Spy Who Came In From The Cold, another John le Carre adaptation. I watched this one for the first time almost a, exactly a year ago, and immediately after picked up this lovely Eureka release of it. Well, I was home recently visiting my parents, and as I often do, I brought some Blu-rays with me that I thought they might enjoy, and we ended up watching this one together again. And it's really cemented it for me as such a stunningly good Cold War spy story. So good, in fact, that I've bought the book to read, actually. It's a film from 1965, directed by Martin Ritt, and starring the exceptional Richard Burton, as well as Claire Bloom and Oscar Werner. The film starts off with a fairly shocking opening sequence, which really sets the bleak and sombre tone of the reality of the Cold War, where information is expensive and life is cheap. Burton himself plays a character called Alec Lemus, a sort of spy manager stationed in West Germany, who gets called back to London and becomes involved in a particularly dangerous mission. I think this film does a superb job of really showing the lengths that a spy had to go through in order to have their background check out. It shows the mundane, the acting-like display that they might have done for the sake of others, and of course for the sake of whoever might have been watching at any point in time because you never know whose eyes are on you, or who they might be working for. The unpleasant nature of some tasks might not just be against the enemy, but may be necessary against the innocent too, and against yourself. In a similar way to Tinker Tailor, this is a slow burn that again builds and builds the tension with some excellent unexpected twists and turns along the way, where you really feel the character's fear of exposure and for his life. Burton's performance is flawless here and really conveys the necessary bottling of emotions that you can see brimming under the surface of the character, as no matter how much you don't want things to affect you, maybe necessary for a seasoned professional, these things can't help but stay with you. So, if you're in the mood for a Cold War spy thriller, this one is a perfect choice, and Eureka's release of it here is fantastic. And lastly, we are on to the honourable mentions. Of course, the ones that I mentioned right at the beginning are taken for granted here, but I'll also mention Donnie Darko, which I did talk a little bit about during my last pickups video, which is why I didn't include it on my list here. And then the hilarious but underrated Evolution, and lastly, Lars von Trier's Melancholia. And that's everything from me and my May in film. I hope yours was also a brilliant month of movies, and I hope your June has been going fantastically as well. Mine certainly has. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.